Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm here with Dave Dubo. Dave is going to walk us through his five-step process on how he raises private capital. And this is a high-level overview of the five-step system that Dave teaches on a regular basis. I use a lot of this in my business for raising private capital to invest in my real estate transactions. So I know that it works. I'm so glad he's here to be able to walk us through this system. Before we get into it with Dave, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. If you don't mind, hit the like button as well. That really helps out me and my channel and also helps YouTube's algorithm put this video in front of the right audience. And now without further ado, let's get into it. Dave, thanks so much for being here today. Before we jump into it with you, why don't you give us a brief overview on who you are and what you do as a real estate investor? Thanks, Darren. Yeah, so I've been in the real estate game one way or the other for quite some time. Uh, I started off with creative, no money, low money down type deals. Initial little claim to fame was doing 18 deals in 18 months. Uh, took some time off, became the marketing guy for a real estate guru. Uh, helped him grow his education company and investment company from him and one employee and working out of his basement to 128 employees, seven branch offices and about $200 million a year in revenues. Uh, so that's, that was, I was the marketing guy for that. Got back into real estate investing in, in 2010, started focusing on what's called client first rent to own deals, tenant first rent to own deals. Uh, did like most people, I self-financed my first few properties and quickly ran out of cash and credit to do more. And I'd heard, you know what, just find a good deal and the money will magically find you. Well, I had the perfect tenant buyers land on my lap and I knew I needed to do something. So I tried cold calling and Darren, uh, I quite frankly, I would rather stick a needle in my eye <laughs> than cold call people trying to hit them up for cash. But I tried anyhow and failed miserably and my poor little ego couldn't handle it. So then I said, okay, uh, I've heard, you know, turn every conversation into a real estate conversation. Have you heard that one? So yeah. I decided to try that. So I said, I said I'll, I'll be the networking guy. So I ran out with my business cards and Chamber of Commerce and BNI and Toastmasters and wherever they let me in, schmoozed up a storm and raised exactly zero dollars. <laughs> and then I was starting to get pretty desperate and I had to get an extension on the, on the subject of removals. And I came up with a brilliant idea there. And I came up with a brilliant idea. I said, this is such a good deal. It could pretty much sell itself. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to create a little one page PDF. And I'm going to email that to everybody I know. And God knows somebody's going to bite on this sucker. So that's what I did. Sent that PDF out to a couple of hundred people. And that was the only thing I started getting a little bit of traction on. I started getting some replies back. And that got me excited, Darren, until I started rep reading those replies. And basically they said, Dave, haven't heard from you in five years, 10 years, some cases, 15 years or more. And here you are, hit me up for cash. Take a hike, buckaroo, or some <laughs> version thereof. Usually not that polite. Bottom line, my friend, I lost that deal. I had to return the tenant buyer their, their uh, deposit back. I was out at about a thousand bucks with expenses and the home inspections and all this kind of stuff. Ticked off the realtor, ticked off my client big time, ticked off the seller. Small kind of, I'm, I live in a small city, Kamloops, so it was kind of major egg on my face for a while. And that's when I decided, you know what? That sucks. I never want to be in that position where I am desperately chasing after the money. And I, I've got to dial this in and figure out how to raise capital. So that's when I started getting passionate about this and, and started taking some courses and some coaching and some training. And most of it was the same old crap. Get better at dialing for dollars. Get better at closing people over the phone, get better at salesy type stuff, get better at networking and schmoozing. And I didn't want to get better at any of that stuff. And I said, Dave, you dummy, if there's one thing you're pretty good at, it's marketing. Why don't you apply marketing to finding investors and raising capital and try and turn this thing around. And instead of you chasing after people, how cool would it be if you could get people reaching out to you, texting you, emailing you, calling you already pre-educated, pre-motivated, pre-qualified, and predisposed to investing with you. So that's, that's what I did. And that's how I came up with what I call this money partner formula, Darren. And over the years, I've raised millions of bucks for my own deals. But more importantly, I've helped other people, students, and clients at this point, 
raise cumulatively hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars for their deals as well. So what is the first thing that people can do in order to be able to start raising capital and having people being attracted to them? Because that's really what it's all about. It's you want people, like you said, coming to you versus you coming to them. So how can, how can we start to do that first and foremost? Well, Darren, uh, the, the first thing we have to do is we have to get laser focused on who we should be approaching as our prospective investors. And here's the biggest mistake I see people making is they say, you know what? Anybody with a checkbook and a pulse is fine, right? And you and I both know that that's the, the furth furthest thing from the truth. So, there, you know, a lot of people, when they get started, they start putting all their deals on, on social media, on Facebook and all this kind of stuff, trying to, you know, just shotgun it and hopefully somebody will respond. Mm -hmm. Here's the danger with that. First of all, if we're going out to the general public, in order for people to invest with us, they need to know us, they need to like us, they need to trust us with their money. And if you're going out to a stranger, they don't know you, they don't trust you, they don't like you, and they certainly don't trust you with their hundred grand. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? So yeah. you have to start that from scratch. And then the even bigger issue is, and I'm sure most of your viewers and listeners are, are Canadian. Mm -hmm. So the bigger issue is that you're crossing the line with the Securities Commission. And the Securities Commission is there to protect Joe Public from evil con artists, which is a good idea. Yeah. But they say in order for us to raise capital from the general public, we have to be licensed to do so, or we have to jump through a bunch of hoops and a lot of expense and get an offering memorandum. And yeah. most of us as mom and pop real estate investors, it just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So who are we going to focus on? That still leaves us a couple of choices. We can't go after the general public, but they say, you know what? You can focus on accredited investors. These are folks who are not high net worth, high income individuals, doctors, dentists, lawyers, you know, folks that are, have got some pretty good, good income. So if you know a bunch of them, great. Government says, yeah, you can raise as much capital as you want from them, whether you know them or not. All right. So that's, that's cool. But most of us don't know that many of them and everybody's going after them. So there's a lot of demand for their attention. So what does that leave us? That leaves us with people that we have a pre-existing relationship with, people that are in what I call your sphere of influence. So friends, family members, coworkers, past and current customers or clients. It could be people from your, your social environment, your social network, your churches, your, your groups, people that, groups that you belong to, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So you know them and they know you. So that that is where I suggest we want to start with our target market. I always suggest my students and clients try to come up with a, a group of about 200 of these people. And that's what you really want to focus on. And then all of our marketing is going to be going to those 200 people. And I firmly believe, Darren, that, you know, everybody right in our phone, we've got a million dollars of capital. We just have to figure out how to access it. And so that first communication, Dave, is that, you know, um, email, is that uh, just a quick connect, maybe through a text? Is that a, um, some sort of video? Like what is, what is that first step for you? Yeah. So, so the first step for me is actually three steps. So once we've got that, that group of uh, 150, 200 people, ideally you've got their names and their email addresses. Most of the marketing I'm going to be suggesting is online marketing. So we're going to be emailing them. Does that mm -hmm. make sense, Darren? So yeah. we get this all set up and I know you're all set up with this kind of stuff with an email autoresponder. So you can create one email, it gets personalized and sent out to all 200 people all at one time. So the, the way to break the ice, the best way to break the ice is with a couple of emails, short emails. So the first one, I, I call this, a, you know, warm up email number one. It's just basically a catch people up on what you've been up to personally for the last, let's say five years, you, the family, the kids, the spouse, if you're, if you're married, uh, what you've been doing work-wise, what you do for fun. Although this current, as we're filming this, we're in the middle of this COVID thing, how mm -hmm. this is affecting you, you know, what you're up to. So all this kind of just, just conversational. So we're not, there's nothing subliminal. We're not trying to sneak in anything about real estate investing here. It's really just a conversation. So that's the first one. Second one is a video version of the same thing. Highly recommend that. It works really, really well. And then the third communication, this is where we give people the heads up that you're going to start uh, switching gears and starting to talk about real estate uh, moving ahead. So that's so, step number one. Yeah. That's all about uh, creating your list and reconnecting with them. And then here's the cool thing, Darren. <laughs> you know, when I first came up with this process after that stupid blunder I made years ago, 
it wasn't designed to start creating meetings and to start doing presentations. But what I've found is about half the time, or in other words, with about half the clients that we work with, where we actually help them do this, they actually start getting people putting up their hand and saying, hey, you know, for example, hey, hey Darren, I'm curious, what are you doing with real estate? So now, if that happens, we want to be prepared to show them or to have an investor meeting and, and do what I call a million dollar investor presentation. That, so that's step number two of this five step process is let's have a really good, well structured, well thought out, well put together slideshow presentation, or we can just whip out our laptop or we can take our tablet or nowadays with the whole COVID thing and, and staying, staying apart, mm -hmm. uh, we could do it just like we're doing right now on zoom, share the screen and show people our presentation. So I've just found and I know a lot of other uh, gurus say, you know what, you should be able to just kind of write some stuff on a piece of paper or draw some pictures and explain it that way. I don't think that's good enough. I think we owe it to the other person to give them a really good overview of what we're up to. And it also helps us to stay on track. And it's a lot more interesting for the other person to look at as well. So it's all about creating this million dollar investor slideshow presentation. We've connected with this group of people We've now um, gone through a high-level presentation with them of a potential future opportunity that may present. Well, well at, least, at least we've got our presentation ready yeah. in case somebody puts up their hand because here's the biggest challenge, Darren. If we don't have that, we can do everything else right. We can do the whole other five steps, four steps, I should say, of the five-step process. We can do all that stuff great. We can do it perfectly. But if you screw up your presentation, it's all for naught, right? If you screw up the meeting, nothing's going to happen. So it's really important that we're ready to go with that. Awesome. Yeah. So what's next? What happens in step three? Well, step three here for me, this is the magic. This is the marketing component. So I call this constant, consistent communication, the three C's of effective marketing. So constant means that you're going to be doing something marketing wise, and it's going to be coming out on a constant basis. So for example, Darren, if you were, you know, you do, you do your, your YouTube videos and you do different things for marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to highly recommend that, that people pick one thing and they do it constantly and consistently. It constantly means if you're going to have something coming out the, let's say the third Wednesday of every month, come hell or high water, it comes out on the third Wednesday of every month. That's the constant mm -hmm. part of things. The yep. consistent part of things is that you're always talking about the same things. You're always talking about your particular real estate investing strategy. You're always talking about your market. You're always talking about your power team. So you, you'll have different topics, but they all come around the same thing. So you got that consistency in your messaging. You're not scattered, right? Because we want to be seen as a credible authority. We want to be seen as a professional real estate investor in the eyes of, of our money partners, right? So we want to have that consistency. So that's really the key is creating what I call edutainment, edu, edutaining marketing information. So it's a combination of a little bit educational and a bit of fun as well. And you do an amazing job of this with your, with your videos. I absolutely love how you do that. Mm -hmm. Same idea here. We got to keep in mind that the people that are watching our stuff or reading our stuff aren't real estate weirdos like us. So they don't want, we don't want to get in the minutia. We want to keep it reader's digest level, very, very, very high level. One, one more little tidbit with the marketing thing is because people say, well, Dave, how do you get people actually reaching out to you? How do you get people asking for an appointment? How do you get people, you know, clicking on your calendar and booking an appointment with you? And you want to know the secret to this, Darren? Mm -hmm. You don't sound very enthusiastic, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just waiting for you to keep going. <laughs> All right. Here's the secret. You tell them to, right? right. Yeah. So you tell them what to do. So whatever the marketing is at the end of it, you say, Hey, if you'd like to find out more, give me a call. If you'd like to find out more, click on this link and book an appointment. If you'd like to find out how this can work for you, send me a text message, send me an email, whatever, whatever it is that you want them to do, tell them exactly what to do.
It's so simple, but it's also something that is not, it's not uh, intuitive, right? Because I used to speak at, at many uh, events across North America, you know, a couple over the last couple of years. And one of the first things that I learned was you have to tell people to get up and go to the back table to <laughs> sign up for whatever you're doing. Like, otherwise they kind of mill about, they don't really know what to do. So it's like, I love that. I love that you said that. It's like, here's very specific things. And people want to be directed. People want to be told what to do next, right? So I, I love that you brought that up. All right, so now now you can tell me what I need to do next after. <laughs> All right, so so now we got the communication side, we got the marketing side of things going. The next key component is working on your credibility, working on your authority, being seen in the eyes of your target group of prospective investors as a professional real estate entrepreneur, right? So. A lot of people say, well, Dave, do I have to have dozens or hundreds of deals under my belt to be seen as a professional? And the answer is no. You go, well, I've only got two or three deals under my belt. How can I be seen as an expert? Well, here's the good news. You can be because it's all relative, right? And I think it was my, my friend Peter Kinch that pointed this out. And I think he got this from Genworth or something like that, that 95% of the general public has never purchased an investment property, 95%, right? Your own house does not count. Yeah. So if you even have one deal under your belt, you're already head and shoulders ahead of 95% of the non real estate weirdos that you know. Yeah. So how do we do that? So how do we, how do we, you know, put ourselves out there as, as experts in a way that uh, isn't spammy, isn't, uh, you know, sort of just saying I'm an expert because that never works, right? How do we, how do we create that credibility? Oh, there are lots of ways. So the, the first thing I always recommend to people is you want to have an online platform. You want, to, you want to have your own website. That's a good place to start because that can be your online marketing hub. And, and quite frankly, nowadays, if you don't have some sort of an online platform like that, people aren't going to take you very seriously. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? I mean, every serious business or business person has a website. So you need to have a website as well. And I suggest that you have one specific for communicating with your prospective investors. So that's that's a big step. Other steps are some simple stuff too, Darren. So it doesn't have to be super fancy. I mean, having a having a podcast or having a, a show like you do, that that is awesome. That's a great way to do it, but most people aren't quite ready to do that. Some simple things that you can do. First thing is be able to speak very knowledgeably and simply about your specific real estate investing strategy and the market that you're investing in. Being able to explain why it's a good market, why it makes sense, why the fundamentals are there. So be able to explain that well. A good rule of thumb is if you can explain it to a 13 year old kid and they get it easily, that's about the level that you wanna be at. Mm -hmm. Other ideas would be if, when I'm meeting with a prospective investor, even if it's somebody I know really well, even if it's a meeting via Zoom, I'm gonna dress professionally. And here's why, two reasons. First of all, I wanna show the other person respect because again, you know, the, usually the minimum kind of investment I'm looking for is at least $100,000. Mm -hmm. That's a fair chunk of change. So I want to show the other person respect. And by dressing the part, by dressing professionally, you're going to get respect from them as well. So that's, that's a quick shortcut right there. Other things you can have, make sure that you've got professional looking materials. Don't cheap out on your business cards. <laughs> you know, uh, that's the worst thing I can I see people doing is they they get the home, home done jobbies. They print them out on their laser jet and off they go. And nah, <laughs> if, you're, if you're trying to raise hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars, spend a few bucks on some good cards, folks. Mm -hmm. Other thing is get some good professional headshots done, some photographs done of yourself. You can put those up on your website. You can put those up, uh, put, include those in your slideshow presentation all over the place. So again, don't cheap out. Don't try and do the Walmart thing where it's the <laughs> <laughs> the cheesy pose with the gaudy background no invest a few bucks and get some professional photographs done and then there's all sorts of higher level things but anytime you can get interviewed you know be the interviewer and or get interviewed you're automatically seen as an expert authority if you have the opportunity to speak on stage then you're seen as the authority if you're absolutely freaked out at the thought of doing any of those things then I highly recommend take a little bit of Toastmasters training within a month or two. You'll feel much, much more comfortable about it. Where are we at in the process here? Where are we? Are we step? Uh, well, that was step number four. 
All right. <laughs> Darren, I mean, I thought, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to say. So <laughs> we're, 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 we're whipping through them pretty good, buddy. I mean, you I know, spent yeah. hours with me uh, a month or two ago going over this in depth, but again, we're giving everybody the, the 30,000 foot perspective. Step number five is a cool one because I call this the snowball effect. Mm -hmm. And you know how this works, Darren. We've seen, and, and everybody who's watching this has experienced this in one area or another of their lives. But once you've got an investor or two on board with you, and once they're starting to get some returns and they're happy with those returns, it's so much easier to get more investors to start the snowball effect with really good testimonials and warm referrals. Testimonials and warm referrals. So when it comes to testimonials, you know, an ideal time frame for this is, let's say you're working with an investor partner and you're giving them their first cash flow check. Great time to get a testimonial, great time to get a referral. If you're working with an investor partner, you're cashing them out of the deal, you've refinanced, you've sold the deal, whatever it is, they're getting all their capital back. Maybe they're getting all of their profit from the deal as well. That's a perfect time to ask for referral and testimonial as well. And I think that's the point that I always go back to is like, we have to remember as investors, we're really helping other people, right? And yeah, it's not, yeah. I mean, you're absolutely that, that we're profiting alongside those people. But unless we create success for them, um, we're not able to create sex, success for ourselves as well. So I think that's something that I always try to remind myself. That's, um, really, that's a really good point, Darren, if you don't mind me jumping in there. Yeah. That's a huge mind shift for all of us, because I know when I was <laughs> first desperately coming across as that creepy guy trying to raise capital, it was all about me, 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 me. I need money to grow my portfolio. I need money to do more deals. I need, I need, I need, I want, I want, I want. Okay. Now that I've got a few more gray hairs and experience behind me, you realize that we, we, we want to respect our investor partners, but we don't want to put them up on a pedestal, mm. right? The money's important. However, the deal, what we bring to the table is even more important because we're able to help them do something they can't do or they won't do on their own. And that's invest in a revenue property. So we got to, we got to keep that in mind that it's a win. We're creating a win-win scenario. It's not all about us winning. It's just like you said, it's about us helping them to win. It's about us winning together. So we're doing our job. We're getting them helping them to get an outstanding return on their money back by a solid tangible asset, a real piece of property compared to pretty much anything else they could invest in. This is a superior choice. So mm -hmm. always keep that in mind. It's a two way street. They're not higher than you because they got cash and you need it. We're, we're working together in a partnership. I'm going to leave your information, Dave, in the description below, and we'll also flash it up on the screen here because I know that you have a program that you have uh, you take people through, and I think it's it's very valuable. So if anyone's interested in that program, they can reach out directly to you, and you can walk them through your full uh, spectrum of what you do because uh, they just got a snippet of it today here. But thanks so much for doing this. I really appreciate you walking us through on a high level. Is it okay if I give your audience a free copy of my book? Would that be yeah, all right? Absolutely. Right. So you can see behind me there, I've got the, the money partner formula. It's a, a book that I put together that really goes in depth into what we talked about here today. And Darren, I've spared no time or expense of putting this together for you. So you guys, if you want to get the book, here you go. Just go to investorattractionbook.com. This is what's called a lead magnet. So you're going to get the book for free in exchange for your name and your email address. And that's going to get you in our system and our process. And if you're interested in finding out more and and diving in more in depth, you're welcome to do that as well. Thank you so much for joining me, spending some time and really diving into this subject on how to raise private capital. I know it's going to be hugely beneficial for anybody watching. If you guys enjoyed the session with Dave, go ahead and hit that like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenboros.com. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey. And Dave, I hope that you and I, our paths will cross very soon in the near future. And I wish you the best of success as well moving forward. You too, my friend. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the great tips and training that you put out. It's absolutely phenomenal. Awesome. Thanks, Dave.